Edge cases. Edge cases are simply rare situations that can break seemingly working code. For example, we want to count the digits in a given number. So we create this function, which takes in an integer and returns an integer. The simplest way to do this is to convert it to a string and then return the length of the string. We can simplify this into one line like so. So we test this and we get the correct result. So two digits in 10, this is right. But there's a situation this doesn't cover for. So here we put in a minus value and we get four, which is incorrect. We didn't cover minus values. The minus symbol isn't a digit, so this doesn't work. So to fix this, we simply use abs, which will simply convert a minus value to a plus value if it's minus. And now this works. So three digits in, a, in minus 100. To help test edge cases, we can make simple tests. So we can have a list of random values. Uh, you can make this longer if you want. You have the expected result, and then you compare them. That's simply all we're going to do. We're just going to loop through, get the result, compare it. And we get this output. It's all correct, so our code is working. You don't have to fix every edge case imaginable in your code. This depends on the situation. For example, your program might not be able to handle error of the user writing anything other than a number, but if that situation is not actually possible, then you don't have to worry about it. There are many factors to decide how thorough you should be. For example, how important is this part of your program? Does it rely on this function? How important is this application? How likely is this edge case to happen? Is this edge case even possible? And what are the ramifications? Could the program crash or just give the wrong answer? There are certain programming problems that are deceptively difficult but seem very easy. For example, count all the elements in an array declaration. So we have something like this and we need to just count all the elements. Looks simple, right? Let's say you already have a parser to separate this, so you have to process something like this. It's just separated into tokens. So you come up with this solution simply count every non-comma. So we take in first a list of tokens and we return an integer. First, we get rid of the uh, edge cases, which is less than two or not left brace. Then we loop through starting at one because we want to skip the, uh, the left brace. And we simply just count if it's not a comma or a right brace. And if it's a right brace, we break and then at the end we return the count. So in this situation, this works. We expect it as four, it returns four. This is correct. But what if someone does this? So now we have one plus one, two, three, four. And the result here would be six, which is incorrect because one plus one should be one. It should be combined to one. And we realize this doesn't actually work because we're counting every non-comma or right brace. It doesn't work for this situation. So this is an edge case that breaks our code. So the simplest way to fix this is simply to just count every comma and then plus one. So we change the logic like so. So we first basically just if it's a comma plus one, and then return count plus one. This just works, okay, so you just do that, and then, okay, result is four, expected is four, this is correct. But then what if the code is this? So someone puts a comma at the end, which is valid in lots of languages. So now the result will be five, but the expected is four, so this is wrong. So you add a bool to fix this. So here we create a bool was comma, and we're simply gonna count every element in between, but only if the last element was a comma. So if it was a comma, we set comma to true and continue. And then if it's not a comma or a right brace, then we say if comma equals equals two, we plus one, and then we set was comma to false, and then we return count plus one. And then this works. So result is four, expected is four. But then you see this. So if someone adds a function declaration into the uh, array declaration, which you can do, and this has a comma in it. So this is now gonna be a false positive as, as five. So now you have to account for this and then you rage quit realizing this is Im almost impossibly difficult. But then you realize that basically every programming language has to do this in some way if it has complicated array declarations. So some problems seem very easy and are actually easy, but some problems seem very easy, but are actually really, really difficult.